This is Net News Network Headline News for Thursday, May 26, 2022. The FBI is probing the alleged withholding of exculpatory information during the series of investigations into Donald Trump and his campaign known collectively as Crossfire Hurricane. It was revealed in federal court. Agent Curtis Hyde said on the stand on May 24th, while testifying during a trial that he is in being investigated as part of an internal FBI inquiry into Crossfire Hurricane for not including exculpatory information or information that negates an allegation or allegations in an application to the secretive Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. He described the information as various consensual recordings. George Papadopoulos, a former Trump campaign associate who was spied on by an FBI confidential source Before the 2016 election, during an appearance on Fox News, called the disclosure of the FBI probe an incredible twist. Did the FBI willfully take information they knew was tainted to obtain these fraudulent warrants, or were they duped? The FBI received permission from the court just weeks before the 2016 election to spy on Carter Page, another Trump campaign associate. The Bureau also received three renewals, which enabled it to keep spying on Page for months. Department of Justice Inspector General Michael Horowitz, an Obama appointee, investigated the four applications and found they were riddled with errors and omissions that included citing portions of the discredited dossier compiled by ex-British spy Christopher Steele, despite not having verified the portions that were cited, and omitting the fact that Page had worked as a CIA asset, which would have been exculpatory. Kevin Kleinsmith, an FBI lawyer who worked on Crossfire Hurricane, was the first person charged by special counsel John Durham. Kleinsmith admitted to doctoring an email from the CIA to change it from saying Page had been an asset to saying he had not been. Kleinsmith received no time. Durham has since brought charges against two others, including former Hillary Clinton campaign lawyer Michael Sussman. Hyde was testifying during the trial of Sussman, who was charged with lying to the FBI when he said he was bringing claims about Trump and Russia to the Bureau on his own accord, but later acknowledged he was doing so on behalf of a client. Hyde denied under oath that he intentionally withheld exculpatory information from the surveillance court. A more recent audit uncovered widespread problems with the FBI's applications to the court, including the identification of 103 applications that had missing or incomplete Woods file, a document meant to ensure the accuracy of statements. Isn't it great to know that your Federal Bureau of Investigation is so corrupt? If you recall the story a few weeks ago about the American tourists who died at the Sandals Resort in Bahamas, they have finally made a determination of what killed those three tourists, and it was carbon monoxide. Uh, Despite initial speculation, Bahamian authorities have concluded the cause was an isolated incident in one standalone structure, that housed two individual guest rooms and was in no way linked to the resort's air conditioning system, food and beverage service, landscaping services, or foul play. Authorities said that Michael Phillips and Robbie Phillips, along with Vincent Chiarella, died of carbon monoxide poisoning. One person survived. Sandals has added carbon monoxide detectors to all their rooms. I do think it's interesting, though, when this was initially reported, they said that the people who had passed had apparently had violent convulsions before dying. I've been to several carbon monoxide deaths when I worked for the fire department, and no one had convulsions from that then. Senate Republicans on May 26 filibustered controversial House passed legislation designed to combat domestic terrorism. But critics say the bill is a thinly veiled effort to create thought police for members of the military and law enforcement officers. H.R. 350, dubbed the Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act of 2022, would authorize dedicated domestic terrorism offices within the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Justice, and the FBI to analyze and monitor domestic terrorist activity and require the federal government to take steps to protect, prevent domestic terrorism. The legislation would establish a new domestic terrorism unit in DHS, which the bill says would be responsible for monitoring and analyzing domestic terrorism activity. More specifically, the domestic terrorism unit would be responsible for investigating and prosecuting incidents of domestic terrorism and coordinating with Civil Rights Division 
on domestic terrorism matters that may also be hate crime incidents. Further, the bill would establish a new domestic terrorism section within the counterterrorism division of the FBI. The bill would also institute new training programs purportedly designed to root out white supremacist and neo-Nazi infiltration of the military and law enforcement. Yes, we need more and more government bureaucracy. Definitely. The UK government has announced a temporary windfall tax on oil and gas giants to fund a relief package for households struggling with rising bills. Millions of households will receive a £400 or $504 discount off their energy bills. Around 8 million of the lowest income households will be sent a one-off payment of £650. And pensioners will receive a one-off £300 payment. One time. Okay, to help fund the package, will will cost £15 billion pounds, or $19 billion dollars. The government will introduce a 25% profit levy on oil and gas giants, which it expects to generate £5 billion, pounds, or $6.3 billion, in tax revenues. How is it going to help people to give them a one-time discounted energy payment or a one-time check? How is that going to help? This is like plans that you see Democrat governors in the U.S. saying they're going to send a one-time payment of $400 in California to registered car owners to offset the high gas prices. A one-time check of $400 is not going to do anything. This is an ongoing problem with inflation. Everything is going up. And it's because you, the government, have poured trillions of dollars into the economy. The UN Security Council is set to vote on May 26 on a push by the United States to update and strengthen sanctions on North Korea following a string of ballistic missile launches by Pyongyang. The United States, which holds the rotating United Nations Security Council presidency for this month, announced plans for the vote Wednesday. North Korea has been subject to UN sanctions since 2006. The draft revolution, resolution to be voted on Thursday calls for a reduction in the amount of crude oil that North Korea can legally import every year from 4 million to 3 million barrels and will reduce exports of refined petroleum products from 500,000 barrels a year to 375,000. It would also ban the North from exporting mineral fuels, mineral oils, and mineral waxes. Additionally, it would halt the sale or transfer of all tobacco products to North Korea Okay, and tighten maritime sanctions. Exports of clocks and watches would also be banned, so you're not going to be able to buy your knockoff Rolex. Sorry. And, of course, Russia and China, who are also members of the UN Security Council for some reason, are against further sanctions. In fact, they want sanctions reduced. This has been Net News Network Headline News. For more, visit netnewsnetwork.net. Thanks for listening.